Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to my channel, Pediatric Classes. Today, I'm going to discuss about the commonly asked x-rays in the medical examination and pediatrics. So, uh, the answer, let me thank my HOD, Dr. Minichari and Madam, and also my former HOD, Dr. Nadan sir, for all the guidance. Um, then uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen now. So, in this x-ray, uh, in, in this class, we will discuss about a few of the limb x-rays, then few chest x-rays, and a uh, few abdominal x-rays, okay? So, coming to the limb x-rays, the most commonly asked x-ray will be uh, that of a rickets. In the rickets, uh, you can make out that um, we are seeing a cupping and actually a fraying of the metaphyseal regions. We are seeing a splaying, that is a slight lateral deviation. We are also seeing that there is a slight osteopenia in this case. Okay, so I think you will be able to just see this. Another x-ray is about the, this one. This is a lower limb x-ray, uh, which is actually showing a, a bowing of the legs here. Again, in the metaphyseal area, there is a splaying is very nicely seen. as a slight cupping and fraying also. So in short, we see metaphyseal cupping, Spraying, splaying, there is widened epiphysis, osteopenia, and bowing deformities seen in case of rickets. This is a very important question in theory and also in practicals. Okay. Mm. So this is another x-ray about mucopolysaccharidosis. Here, the clinging point is this bullet-shaped metacarpals and also bullet-shaped metatarsals, which is seen in the lower limb axis. So both upper limb and lower limb are having bullet-shaped metacarpals and metatarsals respectively. This is osteopetrosis where the bones appear very dense. So here the bones are appearing more dense. This is a condition in which the bones appear more dense, but they are brittle actually. Coming to the main topic that they are about the chest x-rays. In chest x-rays, the things we should remember is what all we should comment. We should comment not just about what the abnormal findings. An examiner will expect you to comment about, the, uh, you just remember as ABCDFH, okay? So about the airway and lung parenchyma, the bone and the soft tissue, the cardiac shadow, the diaphragm, effusion, the gastric bubble, and also the hilar area. So this is the remembered in uh, the mnemonic ABCDFH. You need not go in just like that order, but then you should be able to tell everything. Uh, otherwise, we won't know where is the pathology. Is, if you go in an order, there's less chance that you will miss it out. Is any abnormalities out, okay? So what are the things you are going to comment? You are going to comment whether this view is a PA view or an AP, that is anthroposal view, or it is a lateral view. We are going to say whether it is an inspiratory or an expiratory film. We may have to tell whether it is a correctly exposed or underexposed or overexposed film. We need to actually uh, see whether the X-rays are properly positioned or, or it is a rotated film. Okay. So we will go in detail by one by one. So first of all, this is about the uh, PA versus AP. Uh, what is the difference? What is a very evident thing which you can see when you compare these two? Okay, I will tell you. So, in a PA view, okay, it is a posterior anterior view. So, just remember that the plate is placed in front of the chest and the rays are coming from behind. Also, it's PA view, whereas in an AP view, AP, andropocyte, the rays are coming from anterior to posterior. So, the and the plate is placed behind the uh, chest, okay, in an androposterior view. Can you make out uh, in posterior anterior view, the clavicles are seen, whereas in an anteroposterior view, the clavicles are above the lung, lung fields, okay? That's one thing. Another thing is, what about ribs? In case of a posterior anterior view, the ribs are lightly, slightly curved, curved sort of, whereas a 
in ap even the lips ribs are almost flat flat and never ever comment about cardiac shadow or the cardiac uh, size on an ap view because see from here in an ap view the cardiac size may appear bigger okay but so don't comment upon an ap view or don't comment upon an ex cardiac enlargement or something or using an ap view so this is in short about this um, what is this in pa and ap differences we need to know whether it is inspiratory or expiratory what is how can you make a inspiratory means if you see the anterior ends of the ribs from here 1 2 3 4 5 6 around 6 to 7 ribs will be touching the diaphragm in case of an inspirate review whereas an expirate review see here 1 2 3 around 3 to 4 ribs only will be touching the diaphragm then how can you know whether the chair, this is properly positioned yes here we need to see that the medial ends of the clavicle are equidistant from the center from here you see here okay you can also see that the anterior ends of the ribs are also equidistant from the center so this is a very correctly positioned x ray now we need to say about the exposure whether it is a normally exposed film or it is an under exposed film or an over exposed film so in a normal exposed film what we can see is the vertebral bodies are actually seen through the x ray through the cardiac shadow also we can see otherwise also we will be able to count the number of vertebrae see here 1 2 3 4 like that okay and the lungs are also looks like this normally shape whereas in an over exposed film see the lungs appear darker see you can actually uh, see things we can compare with the background the background it will be like uh, so much uh, over exposed that will appear dark and this uh, cardiac shadow also appear loosen right little bit whereas in an under exposed film we won't even be able to count the vertebrae uh, through the not directly through the cardiac shadow but also in the upper area also so here we can't even make out the vertebral bodies so this is one thing and this uh, x ray also this uh, what are the lung fields are also appearing hazy right so this is uh, the difference so we have to whenever you get an x ray we have to uh, so what all things we should tell so this uh, that i just tell and uh, ka summarize suppose you get an arm any x ray any x ray you get in hand you come and what is the x ray so it is an x ray chest whether it is an ap view or a pv pa view so this is definitely an ap view the ribs are curved and the clavicle and inside lung fields is all uh, this is a uh, and this uh, you can see the diaphragm uh, see always one thing remember this right diaphragm will be okay, because of the position of the liver generally it is around 1 cm higher than the um, left side of diaphragm okay okay so one thing is so we are commenting like so this is an x ray chest the pa view is it a properly positioned film it's a properly positioned film because the uh, clavicles appear equidistant from the center the anterior ends of the ribs are okay okay it's a properly exposed film because you can see count the number of vertebrae bodies and the lung fields are also appearing correctly uh, correct uh, neither over exposed nor under exposed so it's a correctly positioned correctly exposed Uh, X-ray. So then, um, what else we should note? We should come in now. We will go in an order. We are saying about the airway, the trachea appears center. There is no mediastinal shift. Then we all we see the bones. So the bones are appearing normal. Soft tissue is also appearing normal. There is no subcutaneous emphysema and all. The cardiac shadow appears normal. Okay, the diaphragm. Okay, properly placed, and also. there is no effusion effusion means you have to see for the cardiophrenic angle and also the, the both the cardiophrenic angle and the costophrenic angle we should be seeing to say whether there is any effusion or not so there is no effusion of no fluid levels the gastric uh, bubbles are seen and the hyla appears normal so this much if we go and the lung parenchyma again you should see whether any abnormalities are there no we can't make out any abnormalities so and the cardiac there is no extra cardiac so this much you go in an order you uh, say properly then it will you will not miss out anything now let us see some abnormal x rays okay so what is this x ray so it is a properly it is actually is very hazy x ray also this is actually the ground glass appearance of the lung fields or a ground glass appearance seen in case of hyaline membrane disease 
seen in case of a neonate. In which condition more common? It is seen commonly in preterm. So what is the treatment for this? The treatment will be surfactant. And uh, if sometimes we may have to intubate. Uh, every day when we have before giving surfactant, we have to intubate. But there is a technical ensure technique where we intubate, give surfactant, and extubate. So it is called ensure technique. So some of them, the baby sick means we will intubate, give surfactant, and connect to the ventilator for some time. So this is a X-ray of an HMD. Another thing, what is this? You are seeing a reticulonodular pattern in the first X-ray here. This is a typical in a neuron. It's a typical of meconium aspiration syndrome. See here the second X-ray. I am. Okay, can you make out an air uh, black thing around it, like into the chest cavity? Yes. What is that? That is a complication of meconium aspiration syndrome. That is a pneumothorax. I'll be putting out more X-rays on pneumothorax in the further sessions, or rather, the after some time. So if you see white dots on a black background, in case of a neural X-ray, if it is a low volume lung, then think of HMD in a preterm baby. It is a high volume or no, then think of TTN or meconium aspiration. It can be anything in case of pneumonia, CHF or PDA. So this X-ray is to be very clear. So what is this X-ray? It's a very easy X-ray. What are you seeing? You are seeing the air bubbles. Rather, air in the chest cavity, all this log pressure things. Can you make out it is going up? This is nothing but a case of congenital diaphragmatic hernia, where you can see the intestine herniating into the diaphragm. There is a medial channel shift happening. Again, another case of congenital diaphragmatic hernia. The baby will present to you with respiratory distress at birth. There will be scaffold abdomen. You will see that the heart uh, sounds are heard more on the other side. There is a decreased air entry. You take an X-ray. This is what you actually see. What is this? This is a case of esophageal atresia. You can see that the uh, tube is getting coiled here. So another X-ray, again, we can see that the esophageal, that if you put an NG tube, which is or a neurogastric tube, the tube is getting coiled here. And in the proximal uh, esophageal, there is air, whereas there is no uh, air in the abdomen and the tube is getting coiled. Whenever you are taking X-ray, it's better you put an NG tube always. So you can see where the chest also, if there's any problem, and you can actually rule out all those things also. So it's a case of esophageal atresia. Okay, now let us discuss about the, uh, now let us discover about this, that is the right upper lobe collapse. What you are actually seeing here, see all this condition, you have to say that this is a chest x-ray of a child, uh, then um, you have to say all the things which we actually discussed initially, then come to the pathology. To save time, I'm just not telling you now the pathology because the initial part, we have discussed everything. So this, you are seeing a white homogeneous opacity in the right upper lobe of a child. Here, what has happened? This is a collapse because the hilum is shifted up. There is a slight tracheal shift you can see here. So this is a case of right upper lobe collapse. Okay, uh, sorry for the trouble. Actually, I got unmute uh, in between. I got muted myself. Okay, so this is another case of lobar consolidation. So upper lobe collapse, I have already discussed. Another lobar consolidation, again, upper lobe uh, collab consolidation here. Uh, this is a mid lobe. You can see there is another consolidation. Whenever there is a consolidation, if you see close, closely, you can also see air bronchogram. That is, in the bronchus, you can see the air. Um, then, this is a, another case of a right upper lobe consolidation, but there is the margins are very clearly seen. Generally, in consolidation, the, we won't see the margins clearly here. The margins 
you are very clearly seen that is because of the bulging fissure so what do you uh, suppose you get a case of a child with okay, come with pneumonia or come with cough respiratory distress you take an x-ray you see this uh, image and there is a bulging fissure seen we always consider few organisms the most common is klebsiella in an immunocompromised patient or a pneumococca in an immunocompetent patient even that so uh, this is a case of a uh, loba consolidation with a bulging fissure now what is this this is a case of pneumothorax can you make out onto the left side there are lungs the lung parenchyma is not seen it is collapsed you, what you see is full air you are not seeing any lung markings always remember when you see this we may get confused whether it is an overexposed film or something like that means just see whether you can trace out the lung markings to the periphery yes here you cannot see the lung markings so this is there is full air what is the treatment it is intercostal uh drainage here to emergency okay it is a pneumothorax uh, so this is a case of pneumothorax again another x-ray which is showing a left-sided pneumothorax so what is this are you seeing air in this area no there is a tracheal shift to the mid or rather mediastinal shift to the uh, right side you are seeing fluid or a white area no so you just see the angles we are seeing we cannot see the cardiophrenic angle but the costophrenic angles is of are obliterated there is a effusion this is nothing but an effusion this is another case but this is the here the effusion is on to the right side you can make out generally the effusion there is like curving up this is because it follows the ellis curve can say an straight line this is a case of hydronumothorax this x ray actually uh, is showing a margin definite margin this is actually a little difficult for undergraduates but at least at the postgraduate level you should be able to make this is a case of lung abscess with an air fluid level actually this was a case treated by gubnadan sir uh, when he was in ich kote so there is we can definitely we can see an air fluid level on taking then then we may get confused whether it is some uh, fluid level no the angles are little clear when you take a lateral x ray also the angles the posterior side are clearer but this here air fluid level remains so this is a case uh, this, this is not the first x ray of that abscess child okay in between the treatment sometime it has been taken so not a, a uh, the no, you know i don't know whether undergraduates will be able to make it out but yeah so another thing is about the pneumatocele what is this this is most commonly seen in which a uh, condition it is staph staph pneumonia it is uh, they will cause micro abscesses they will collapse and then coalesce and then later you will get the formation of pneumatocele okay again another case of pneumatocele but always differential between pneumatocele and abscess how in pneumatocele there are thin wall cavities whereas this is a case of lung abscess where you can see the thick wall see make out can you make out the thick wall so this is a case of lung abscess with a thick wall cavity this is just taken from the rntcp uh, new guidelines just to show you the primary complex actually here you can make out the paratracheal nodes here the hilar nodes so this is another case of the second x ray is about the primary complex where there is a node and also a parenchymal lesion the node plus the parenchymal lesion together makes the primary complex what is this okay so how many uh, the x ray you can see white 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 dots now so many things are there so if you get an appearance like this this is the miliary tb where you get to see an image there are multiple small opacities in throughout the lung parenchyma this is nothing but a case of miliary tuberculosis so that's in a short about the respiratory part of it and now let us see he see some x rays about the cvs parts so typical x ray so whenever you seeing this x ray you no know, before i say try to tell the x ray so that uh, i always feel one thing that is um, you should make mistakes that's how we learn okay even uh, at this level we always every day I, our medical professionals means we should be lifelong learners daily we should learn something so the best way to learn is to commit mistakes learn from it so uh, what is your comment upon it think so it is nice a very characteristic x ray is a bow shaped heart so it is yes you are right it is tough again another image of top i got so i just put it up what is this it is a figure of eight appearance figure of eight appearance is seen in 
TAPVC. If you want to see uh, or know more about TAPVC, TOF and all, you can refer to my previous videos on TOF and TAPVC. Okay. Now um, we have another case. What is this? Can you make out this X-ray? Here, the cardiac thing, if you see, okay, there are certain uh, high AC uh, opacities into the paracardiac regions. As if you see the cardiac thing, the cardiac, this is egg on and appearance seen in case of TGA. So, BST, where you see a, you see here, right atrial enlargement is there. So, cardiomegaly is there. So, not much cardiac, but the RA enlargement and RB enlargement, we can make out. This is a huge cardiomegaly, okay? But how can you make out the cardiomegaly? So that is by calculating the cardiothoracic ratio. What you should do is, um, okay. Okay, cardiothoracic. What you should do is we have to take the cardiac ratio divided by the thoracic ratio. Okay, uh, so we have to take the maximum distance and then we should do it. Then coming to the abdominal x rays, this is nothing but air under the diaphragm, very commonly seen in case of ruptured intercell perforation. Okay. What is this? This is indecisception. You can see uh, the most characteristic will be the ultrasound image for medical undergraduate. This is nothing but the target sign which is shown in the USG. Here it is just like an uh, indecisive. There is more air here and this area will be hazy and all those things. In case of hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, we can see that there is a single large air bubble. So single bubble appearance. Here also we can see the ultrasonography. Here there is more every time ask question that is muscle thickness will be more than three millimeters. The channel length will be more than 15 millimeter and the diameter will be more than eight millimeter in case of a hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. In case of duodenal atresias, what you see is a double bubble appearance. You can see here one bubble and another bubble, which is also seen in stenodural stenosis, dual web, annular pancreas, midget volvulus, lat bands, etc. Lots of air here. The walls of the intestine are thickened. Okay. Here, this is actually a pneumatosis intestinalis, and also this other is called as a football sign, all seen in case of necrotizing endrocolitis. Not a commonly asked X ray for uh, undergraduates, but still I put it. Husband disease, again here in the anal area or the, we are not seeing any air in this area of rectum or, or feces, but then in the upper area, that is, is the large bubble, it is so much of dilated thing seen in case of Hirschsprung disease, okay, congenital agganglionic stenosis. The skull x-rays, the most commonly asked skull x-rays are nothing but about the thalassemia. For uh, what is seeing thalassemia? That is the hair on an appearance. Okay, you can make out in another x-ray of thalassemia. Again, hair on an appearance. This is another x-ray of Langerhans cell cell cystiocellulitis where you can see single or multiple lytic bone lesions. So I just put an image of the MCU. Uh, what is this saying here? We are putting injecting the dye. They are actually seeing so much dilated, the renal pelvis, the ureter, uh, the library see the so much. It's a great floor vesico ureteric reflex. So that ends the class uh, on x-rays. And thank you so much. And I hope you are uh, I hope you are clear here. Uh, keep seeing it a few times so that you will be able to um, actually uh, make out uh, or you can even uh, revise. Uh, so in short, if I say, if I tell you, you should know basic things about uh, the Ricketts X-ray and also the uh, lung X-rays, especially consolidation, pleural effusion, pneumothorax, then congenital diaphragmatic hernia, HMDs, um, then uh, abscess, lung abscess uh, or a pneumatoceles. So I have just put a very few x-rays only actually. And CBS is a characteristic x-rays only I have put. 
this uh, grid through it brush uh, keep seeing abdominal exercise most commonly will be about uh, just single bubble or a double bubble and or maybe a uh, what they can have or air under the diaphragm uh, like that so uh, the basic things i have told you uh, so keep revising it uh, seeing the image carefully you analyze and say i have told how to interpret the x ray at the start of the session likewise you go in a step wise manner whenever anybody is asking an x ray say like it's an x ray chest whether it is an ap or a pa view it is a properly positioned x ray the exposure is correct then you comment upon the airway then about the uh, bony tissues of tissues cardiac shadow appears normal then the lung parenchyma the i am seeing a consolidation in the right suppose there is a consolidation is you say there is a lung consolidation seeing in the right upper lobe like was everything it should be uh, told like that. then how the cardiophrenic and the costophrenic angles are clear i'm seeing the air bubble the acid bubble is seen the hilum is okay so go in and order so that you don't miss out anything and i hope this session was useful for you if it okay if it you like the video please do like and share thank you Read back.